It's 4am. I just had a shower and now we're off to the airport. I honestly can't believe I nearly woke up at this time during sixth form. Ah! Hey guys, I'm officially in Kosovo. I'm just in the airport. It's a tiny airport, oh my god, and it's literally in the middle of the mountains. It's insane. Like, looking outside, it's just luscious green. It's so beautiful. I'm a little bit stressed, I'm not gonna lie, because my friend who's picking me up with her dad is not answering my calls, and I'm like, where are you? And my flight was delayed while I was in the air, so I obviously couldn't tell her that. I'm not getting worked up. I know I'll be fine. But right now I'm a little bit like, am I just stranded in the airport in the middle of nowhere in Kosovo? Okay, so I'm just waiting for my friend. She's on her way. Thank God. I had such a freak out moment. I swear, longest seven minutes of my life where she didn't reply. I'm like, oh. but look, it's literally in the mountains. It's such a, such a cute place. And also so sunny and warm and gorgeous. Hi guys, so I just got back from Kosovo and I really want to talk about my experiences. I didn't vlog that much, like I just took the odd clips, so I feel like without a little bit of a chat, you just can't, can't feel the experience that I had. One of the things which struck me most about my time in Kosovo was the community-based style of living. My friend Uyeza, who I stayed with, she lives in this little village in a rural area in the mountains. She lives with her grandparents, her mom, her dad, her siblings, and then throughout the day, like her aunties, her uncles, her cousins, her extended cousins, people from the village will just casually come in and out of the house at all times. So you always feel part of the extended community there. Everyone knows everyone's name in the village. It really made me reflect on our individualistic culture in the UK and the fact that like, I don't know, maybe this is just my experience, but people's houses have just seem quite separate. Like I don't really know all my neighbors, all the people living around me. I definitely wouldn't just go randomly knock on their door any day and be like, oh, hi, I'm here for a chat. If I needed something like flour, I would never go ask my neighbors first. Like I would always just go get it. I also feel like the people in my area just aren't invested in my family and our ongoings. And yes, that means that you get like a private life, but also it means we're more of like an isolated unit. Yeah, it was just really cool to see how you could live more in tandem with the people around you. We also celebrated Eid, which is so cool because even though I have a lot of Muslim friends in the UK, I've never actually celebrated Eid. It's a Muslim holiday, which marks the end of Ramadan, which is the fasting period. And in the village, they had all these traditions which we got to be a part of, which was so fun. So like all the men, the, the men of the households of the village, all go to each of the houses and then end at our house and then we're all gonna have loads of food and celebrations and then apparently we're gonna go around people's houses and eat cake so i'm excited but i'm also scared at the amount of food that we're probably gonna consume today but yeah it's gonna be a good day good morning pedro how are you <laughs> oh wait people know you pedro oh yeah Hi. <laughs> it's pedro again <laughs> Put hide, but all me. Put hide, but all me. Hey guys, just some classic Jade behaviour. Um, so before all the festivities begin, we have like 40 minutes where nothing really is happening. So I'm gonna do some yoga. <laughs> and I've been given like a makeshift yoga mat blanket. And I've been told to go to the end of this field. I've been given tea, which is so lovely. <laughs> yeah, I just feel very loved in this household. It just feels like such a warm family environment. <laughs> like I feel part of the family, we all have nicknames. It's just lovely. Oh. Homemade bread. Mm. I don't think I'm ready to eat all this. Nice. Wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
Everyone witness how beautiful Emma Tam is. You're beautiful. <laughs> what are we up to now? <laughs> when it's low, Chris, she. So eat everyone's cakes in the village. <laughs> <laughs> no, the trick is because we're so full already, we share. <laughs> Clever. I'm genuinely concerned for my stomach. Yeah, me and Jade are gonna share wait, cake wait, wait. and butter. Okay, can we be partners in this? Okay. Okay. It's like the Oh, is this the first house already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the village do not be big. <laughs> Smile. Oh. And this is <laughs> This is like inception. <laughs> Guys, I have never in my life eaten as much sugar as I ate at Eid. It was to the point where I literally had a headache. I thought my head was gonna explode because it was like culturally kind of rude to not accept the sweet things they'd made for you. So we'd go to every single house. I think it was like five houses and they would give us homemade baklava, which is this lovely, I think it's Turkish, Turkish sweet. It's like pastry made with dates. They'd give us Turkish delights. They'd give us like basically just pure sugar wrapped in more sugar. <laughs> and it was so delicious, but also so intense, like the amount of sugar we ate that day. It was also such a nice opportunity to really feel part of the community, like going into every single house in the village and getting to know the family. Like my friend Uyazi would be translating for us, the Albanian, um, but also just feeling so welcomed was really cool. It also made me reflect on how holidays like Christmas here, I don't know, we just always celebrate them with our family and that's kind of it. But she was saying how they believe that in Eid, the more people that you share food with, the more people that you help, the more blessings that you'll have for the next year, which is partly why they were just so welcoming having us there for that really important celebration, which was kind of an honor. I also tried to learn some Albanian. <laughs> it's actually hilarious how much you can pick up when people don't speak English and so you're just like a forced to listen and learn little things. <laughs> You've got to try, don't you? You don't get better at language till you just try and probably say it wrong. I also made a little cheeky TikTok, an Albanian TikTok. So, you know, really Im immersing myself in the culture. It was also really special to spend time with the other uni friends who came. Two of the people there are from the year below. So I don't actually know them that well. I've had the old class with them. I follow them on Instagram, but I've never actually spent time with them in person. And they were just so lovely. I think all the people on this trip were just very artistic and free people is how I describe them. The way that they see the world is as though life is their performance art. The way they engage with people just has so much warmth and depth to it. The way they choose their clothes each day is just like, I don't know, it just feels like pure expression. And I always find it so inspiring to be around people like that who are so authentic to themselves and who are so eager to explore and learn about the world. Also, all of us really love nature, which is just so important for me to have people who understand it. My friend has a farm, so we would just be doing farm work. We would only eat fresh produce. I spent one whole morning cracking walnuts, which really gave me an appreciation for when I see a cracked walnut in a shop, like a whole bag of walnuts. I'm like, someone literally sat there and had to take off the shells. Also interesting, so Kosovo is one of the most mineral dense areas of the world. Guys, I kid you not. So we were on this mountain top, like looking over at the beautiful views. It was so green, gorgeous. And you look down 
and the little ground, like the rocks on the ground are glistening. You pick them up and there's just gemstones on the floor. <laughs> Apparently this was also a source of war in the past. It's because this area is so mineral dense for mining, but yeah, it just felt really special, like so naturally rich. We also went to two of the cities, Prizren and Pristina. Prizren had this beautiful mosque in the center of the city. Wow, it was gorgeous. And then it also had this long walk up to these ruins from the 12th century, I believe, which is very, very, very old. <laughs> I'm surprised those ruins are not ruined. And that city reminded me a lot of Florence in Italy. Like when I was in Tirelia, I went to Florence for like a day and there was also a similar viewpoint and the whole look and vibe of the city gave me Florence vibes. And then we went to Pristina, which is the capital city. And oh my gosh. Okay, so they have a national library. And firstly, if you know anything about me, you will know that I love a good library. Like when I was backpacking Australia, in every single state of Australia, I went to the state library because I don't know, it's just the most important tourist thing to see, of course. And their library in Pristina is an architectural masterpiece of brutalism, which is a style of architecture. And it's so heavily contested, whether it's literally the ugliest building ever, or whether it's like, a beautiful masterpiece of brutalism. I'm gonna insert some photos here. Doesn't it look a bit like a spaceship or a prison? That's like the mix I'm getting. Like you have the white domes, which are like, oh, super cool. Like, wow, modern. But then the entire thing is barred with steel. And it was also shocking because when we went inside, it was so beautiful. Like all the symmetry, all the colors. We got to go in um, this government officials room with like these beautiful circular designs on the wall. Lovely, but the outside, I swear I could stare at it all day. It's just fascinating. Yeah, and then I think a final thing about Kosovo was, so they had a war with Serbia and it only ended in 1999, I wanna say, which is like 20 years ago, which is literally nothing. And like my friend's dad literally was a soldier in that war. Like it affected their family a lot. It affected basically everyone because it's like the current generation is still that generation. And even though the country is so beautiful, like green, mountainous, so full of nature, to me, it also felt a little bit eerie. It felt like you can still feel the remnants of a war having been so recent. Like you're driving around and then all of a sudden you see mass graves with like also small tombstones where literal children have been killed. Or you're driving around and then you see a house which has been like burnt and just abandoned and like assumably everyone in the house is no longer there and they don't have any descendants. So they sort of just left the house like a ghost house. And also because the land is so open, like it's mountainous, but when you're in the valley, it's really flat. I just felt myself imagining what it must have been like to have like troops coming in and feeling like there's almost nowhere to hide. Um, and my friend's dad was telling us stories from the war and what it was like for him. Yeah, so that was just a really interesting element of being there was that history and how you can still feel it. Yeah, overall, it was such an amazing experience, like to spend time with my friends and to get to know her family, but also Kosovo is such a beautiful country and so diverse in terms of the mountains and the nature, but also the cities and the culture. If you have any chance to go, I highly recommend going. And yeah, I just feel so genuinely grateful to have friends from areas that I might never have otherwise visited. Like prior to university, I really didn't know that much about Kosovo as I think a lot of people don't. Like, I don't know, for some reason, like when I say, oh, I'm going to Kosovo, like people don't know where that is. You know, some, some countries are just not like talked about in the mainstream as much. And I feel like that's one of them. So I'm just really grateful for the perspectives that it's given me. And also how cool to be able to go somewhere with locals. I'm just continually realizing that like when you travel and you aren't with a local, you're just missing so much. Like imagine going there and like not even knowing about the history and how it's affected the place. Like, yeah, 
I always recommend trying to find locals if you're going traveling. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. Um, please comment down your top destination that you would like to travel to and why. Like maybe you have a friend from that place or maybe you're interested in their history or their culture or I don't know, maybe you, like you've seen YouTubers go there, like where do you want to go and why? Like where do you feel drawn to? For me, the next two places that are like my top, top, top are Brazil and Vietnam just because some of my best friends in the world are from those two countries and I would love to understand them better through visiting their countries. Have an amazing rest of your day, sending you all the love. Bye.